So Joe decided to come visit us, and believe it or not, he just spent three million dollars worth. Look at everything that he bought. I didn't realize that YouTube was so lucrative, Joe. Gotti, <laughs> Gotti. <laughs> So uh, go ahead, Chris, go ahead, invoice them, and uh, I'll, I'll get thank, this back. Thank you so much, Roman. I'll, I'll, I'll get this back up. It's always time. I love average Joe watch reviews. He's just all right. He's Thank you. A, he's just an average Joe. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you very much. Cheers. Cheers, Cheers, Cheers. Salud. 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 Thank you so much, Nico. Um, you guys have no idea how much that plug costed me. So uh, there you go. Um, <laughs> So, welcome to Average Drew Watch Reviews, where we do more than just reviews. Today, we are featuring my Grail watch. And I think the million dollar question, which is kind of close to what this watch feels like it cost to me, because um, this is a, an expensive watch. Did I buy the Omega Silver Snoopy? Now, in my promotions of the video, I did mention that I bought something from the Luxury Bazaar, which is Roman Scharf's store. And I did. I did buy something from there, but you don't have to tune into the end of the video. I'm going to tell you straight up right now that I did not buy the watch. Oh no, God! I actually simply went there to pick up jewelry that I bought for my wife. All right, so I didn't buy the watch, but a uh, huge shout out to Luxury Bazaar for allowing me to spend some time filming the watch and reviewing it. So that's what we're going to do today. But before I get into that, I think we should get into a little bit of history. Already in progress. Now the 2003 Snoopy from Omega was limited to 5,441 pieces, which is not as limited to the 2015, which only produced 1,970 pieces, which makes that piece particularly more scarce and therefore more valuable. The 2015 is the true collector's item, the true investor's dream, which actually coincides with the date that uh, Omega was given the Silver Snoopy Award in 1970 by NASA which is one of the highest space award that you can receive. So just a really short explanation of why this watch is so iconic and why, why the Silver Snoopy. Basically the Apollo 13 mission had a spaceship that was to snoop around for some landing sites on the moon. Therefore calling the spaceship Snoopy. And I believe the other one, there was another spaceship called the Charlie Brown. So what essentially happened was there was some uh, engine malfunction on the Apollo 13 mission. They had Speedmaster on the flight and they used the accuracy of that Speedmaster for an engine burn that rerouted them safely back to Earth. And that essentially is why Speedmaster, or should I say Omega, has received this Silver Snoopy Award because it essentially saved the entire crew of the Apollo 13. This piece can now fetch upwards to almost $50,000. So this is the Omega Speedmaster Silver Snoopy Anniversary Series Coaxial Master Chronometer Chronograph 42 millimeters, reference number 310.32.42.50.02.001. Did you get all that? Yeah, Omega, you need to work on the reference number because that is something that does not roll off the tongue very easily. Let's start with my favorite aspect of the watch, which is the chronograph feature. Here is a side by side of what happens when you stop the chronograph and reset it. Snoopy actually stops when you press this top pusher and then he goes behind the moon with the bottom pusher. 
Take a look at that in slow motion. How cool is that? Snoopy is actually connected to the chronograph second hand as the Earth rotating is a disc that's hooked up to the sub-dial function. So powering this special watch is the Omega Coaxial Master Chronometer caliber 3861. And there's no screw down crown as you can see here so you pop the crown out to one position and you're setting the, the day there actually is no date function with this watch so the bezel is actually a blue ceramic zr02 bezel ring with a white enamel tachymeter scale and this is not a limited edition so if you were to get this watch from omega you, if you can get on the waiting lists, it's gonna be a two to three year waiting list and they're gonna to need to have your $9,600 down payment today. This leads into why this watch is fetching over $30,000 wherever you look. Because at the end of the day, people want something now, not three years from now, and they're gonna pay an absolute premium if they want it today. So the Silver Snoopy measures in at 42 millimeters in case diameter and the 20 millimeter between the lugs. There's actually a 50 hour power reserve and there actually is domed scratch resistant sapphire crystal with anti-reflective treatment on both sides. But as I tested, there was only sapphire crystal on the top side the underneath did not test for sapphire crystal, even though it still may receive that anti-reflective treatment. So this is a manual wind chronograph movement. This is not an automatic, there is no rotor, and this is just due to the fact of the design of the watch. Now this is a certified master chronometer, which has a coaxial escapement. This is approved by Metas, which is has a resistance of 15,000 gauss. Now this is pretty impressive considering this is an exhibition case back and the way that Omega gets around this is through their technology of a free sprung balance and the silicon balance spring which is anti-magnetic. And to finish the watch off we do get rhodium plated finish bridges with straight Geneva waves as well. So this watch features a coated nylon fabric strap done in like a dark blue. As you flip the strap over to the backside, it is done in black and you actually will see inscribed the routing that the spaceship took when it actually had the engine troubles that we discussed in the history part of this video. This strap is um, woven as you can see and it does have that white contrast stitching. This is a waterproof strap, so you can take this in the water, but the watch is only rated at five bar, 50 meters, or should I say 167 feet. Not a diver, since this is indeed a Speedmaster. It, 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 it's not meant for uh, water per se. Uh, which is kind of a shame because uh, you know when you're when you're spending that kind of money on a watch I would expect at least a field watch water resistance When we take a look at the finishing of this watch you see beautiful brushing on the sides and then that high polish look at the curves on the lugs it's almost like a 50s Cadillac fin uh, it's very curvaceous and it's just very prominent, very curvy and just a staple of Omega styling. Very, very nice in person. So according to Omega literature, the dial is actually labeled as silver, even though in person and even here it looks stark white. Now I forgot to mention the buckle. The buckle is really nothing to write home about. It does have the Omega logo there, but I actually expected more from the buckle, uh, even a quick deployment. Um, or a uh, just some type of specialized buckle, especially since this is a, this is a special watch. So um, definitely disappointed with that. Overall feel of the watch is pretty much like your standard Omega. Um, would I pay $30,000 for this watch? Um, absolutely not. 
Um, but do I think this is a ten thousand dollar watch? Yeah, I think I, I honestly I do. I think the case back alone is so unique and so cool. And then just the history behind this watch, and just the fact that you know I'm a huge Peanuts fan, and it all just ties together for me and makes it worth that kind of money and this becoming my grail watch indeed but um did i walk away with this watch today not today but um maybe in the future who knows um but not at thirty thousand dollars not at 40 not at 50 it's got to be in that ten thousand dollar price range for me to be a buyer of this watch so the case back is Omega's patented NAIAD lock, which is a bayonet locking mechanism that always ensures that the case back is always the right way up no matter how you screw it back on. It'll always be in the same position every single time. So on the case back, we see an animated Snoopy in his command and service module orbiting the moon. A very fun, playful way of showing the Apollo 13 mission, um, which I think is pretty cool. So there's actually blue PVD throughout the watch, which includes the angle-shaped hour markers and hands, as well as the embossed silver Snoopy um, medallion on the blue subdial at 9 o'clock. Now, I would have liked to have seen flamed hands and flamed indices at the very least considering the price of the watch even at ten thousand dollars i think we should be getting into that luxury type of blue flaming um, as opposed to um, pvd here's how the watch fits on my seven inch wrist as you can see it definitely has a presence but it does not spill over and it actually has a really nice profile and it's just a beautiful watch on the wrist. All right, so before you guys leave, I'm gonna actually end the video with a magic trick that was done for me at the shop. Really cool trick, so you definitely don't wanna miss that. Let me just go over just a couple of the negatives about this watch, since this is a watch review. Um, this is my grail piece, and just like any other watch, it actually has its imperfections. The first one that really stuck out to me was 165 feet of water resistance. I mean, I, I expected at least a field watch water resistance of a three, 330 feet. Um, you don't get a screw down crown, you don't get screw down pushers. Um, definitely a surprise to me indeed. The other thing was the buckle. The buckle was very disappointing. Kind of just a standard buckle that you would see on any watch. I was expecting Maybe some perlaging on a milled clasp that was a deployant and just maybe a dual push button, something really fancy and something that really felt like it had some, some quality to it, um, especially at the $10,000 price range that Omega would charge if you were blessed enough to get one. The other thing was, uh, or at least a surprise that I got was when I tested the set fire with the diamond tester, I actually tested the top being set fire, but underneath was not set fire according to my diamond tester. Both were definitely AR coded, but I was actually surprised to see that there was not set fire crystal on the back. Um, even Long Island Watches does set fire in the back and that watch is costing much, 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 much less. So, Definitely something that um, I don't think anybody else even realizes. Um, I've never seen that actually tested. So not a deal breaker, um, but just, just something interesting. Um, some of the impressive stuff that I'd like to bring out was just how cool that case back is. Uh, the Snoopy traveling in space with the photorealism of that case back. It just leaves you wondering how in the world the watchmakers actually was able to perform this task of the earth rotating once every minute and Snoopy traveling around the moon. An amazing feat and one of the coolest case backs I've ever seen. The other impressive thing is the fact that it is rated at 15,000 Gauss, being very anti-magnetic. And that's especially impressive because it's an exhibition case back 
Typically, watches would need to have some type of shield or something that would block that. What, the way that Omega gets around that is a silicon hairspring um, and a free balance. Um, and that actually helps with that. So uh, the technology is there in the watch. 50 hour power reserve, another impressive thing about it. Ceramic bezel, which is really welcomed. It's gonna definitely uh, help with uh, chipping and scratching. Um, and then just the brushing and the curvature of the lugs was really noticed when you see this watch in person. So really beautiful watch, symbolizing a really um, historical event and uh, definitely a watch that now that I've met it and had it in my hands, I definitely still want it, but not at the $30,000 price range. Um, I'll see if maybe I can get on a waiting list and wait two to three years. I don't know, we'll see. I mean, anything is possible. So I'm gonna leave you with this final message that there's always time to be kind to one another. Please take care of each other, and I'll see you guys next time on Average Joe Watch Reviews. God bless my friends. Um, so we'll try this. Do me a favor. Doesn't matter, any card, I don't care. Just touch one. Actually, take one. Take one out take for me. One? Yeah, take uh, one out for me. Mm. Quick, quick, quick. Doesn't matter, I don't care. I'm fully, here we go. Have it oh, out. you got me. Right, sign the face of the card, I don't want to see though. Sign it? Yeah, like sign it, like write your name on it. And show the card to the camera. So like, find it here? Like, yeah, 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 go okay. for it, yeah. And then make sure the camera sees as well. This is the part where I just mm. my hand. All right, we're gonna put some cards down. Doesn't matter, that's good. We're gonna take your card, I don't wanna see it. We'll put it somewhere inside the pack, right? So instead of finding your card with my hands, cause like, you know, a magician uses sleight of hand. Like, are you, right. do you play cards at all or no? Yeah, yeah absolutely. A little. So yeah, I'm not gonna find it. it with my hand, but I'm gonna find it with a knife, watch. Should I, should I like, go back a little One, bit? One, <laughs> two. Was it in the card? Yeah, I would say so. <laughs> Hell in the world. Now I do it with my hand. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Holy smokes. Wow. <laughs>